Is this the start of the show? Yes. I think so. Okay. I know. You sorry. were sitting there looking like. I was just waiting to see if you were going to be frozen in animation again. That really makes <laughs> the show. And uh, John and I really have a good time with that. So we're not really sure if you're going to be frozen. Please, thank you guys for joining us for episode. Is this episode five or six? Six. Okay. Episode six of the Short Desk Podcast YouTube show. We are your host today. Steph has been frozen once already, so we're trying to make sure. Is there a storm going on over there in Atlanta? Yes, there is. Okay, so there's a good chance that you will be frozen. John, I don't is know it, why that brings you so much joy. It's just fun because, you know, we get you caught in the middle of an action. So you could be like... <laughs> Don't make, me like, put a, don't make me somehow put a Zoom screen up there. You'd be like, and I'm just like, wow, okay. But you were sitting there taking pictures. I just wanted you to see what you were doing. Yeah, there you go, John. <laughs> That's exactly what you were doing. It was hilarious. I will send it in our group chat. Now, John was semi-frozen right there. That would have been a fun. Yeah, he, was, he gets frozen sometimes, too. Not really. No, I just remained completely still. <laughs> very stoic so um we did go out today for this episode to try a new item john um always with the bad luck in us getting items having to get a 12 pack instead of just getting a regular 20 ounce um but he has it and so there is a new mountain dew so once again we are putting ourselves through torture. Steph, are you frozen? No. <laughs> no. Y'all are frozen. What is going on? <laughs> oh, I'm, man. I'm talking... And I'm like, you know, and I'm noticing that she's looking down. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> she's been looking down quite a long time. I know. <laughs> Y'all bear with us, man. Steph has going through some bad weather up there in Atlanta. John, um, have you guys had bad weather out there by you? I actually had bad weather. Yeah, it's been pretty bad. It was bad mm -hmm. um, heading back from work uh, this afternoon. Mm -hmm. uh, I could barely see... 15 feet in front of me. That's how bad it was. Yeah, it got started pretty early, right? Yeah. I yeah. was I was surprised because normally it starts really late. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's been pretty bad this weather. This started wanted to pop up at 2.30 today. So. Oh, okay. Steph, is it still storming in Atlanta right now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I mean, that really defeats the purpose because if you, you don't move we're going to think you're frozen again so. <sighs> this has been enjoyable three minutes in and I almost fell out so uh, really oh yeah oh wow awesome. well this really will be great nice really bad is it that bad Well, I don't think what what it is if you move or if you don't move it's 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 going to be hilarious regardless it is <laughs> so um like I was saying earlier we did go and get purchased the new Mountain Dew Voodoo mystery flavor poor John again got stuck with 12 packs Steph and I got the regular uh, Mountain Dew flavor. I also went and got the Zero Two because it was a two for sale. And I said, well, I might as well just try the Zero Two. So, Steph, Steph, we're talking to a person that drinks Coca-Cola. <laughs> Coca-Cola cleans off batteries, okay? <laughs> the corrosion of batteries. <laughs> It has to be for it to clean off the corrosion of a battery. <laughs> oh, 
Understood. Understood. All right. So here's what we'll do. Because John has the sugar free. You have the one with the sugar. And I actually got both. Let's start off with John and I tasting the sugar free. John, I, okay. we don't say anything. And then I'll open up the one with the sugar. And then Steph and I will try the one with the sugar. How does that sound? It's okay. Let's try it right now here and see. This is the Mystery Mountain Dew flavor. Salute. All right, don't say nothing, John, but your face tells the story. Oh, man, where's the Bloomingdale straw? Go ahead and go get it. Go get it. Go get it. Wow. Okay. You're going to be amongst the commoners, huh? <laughs> All right, I'm ready. Okay. Yeah. Let's go for it. I got to take another swig. I'm sorry. Oh, excuse me. Ooh. All right. So. I'm going to give my thoughts. I'm going to start off with the regular Mountain Dew that I just had. It is not bad. It's not bad at all. Uh, I don't know what the, what the, I'm trying to figure out what type of fruity flavor that I'm tasting with that one stuff. Do you, do you, can you decipher what that is? I, Mm. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Yes. There you go. Right. Yeah. Okay. So John and I did the zero sugar one as well. John, your thoughts on the zero sugar. Um, I am thoroughly confused as to what this is. Mm -hmm. I I cannot, I cannot decipher, uh, what flavor this Mountain Dew is. It's obviously Mm -hmm. different from the sugar, um, sugar field one, Mm -hmm. but, um, it's palatable. But mm-hmm. I would suggest uh, you saving your money. Mm-hmm. And if you just like regular Mountain Dew, just get a regular Mountain Dew. Or um, just drink water. I'm not, a, I'm not a huge fan, but just out of principle, and plus it's zero sugar, I am probably going to drink these. Mm-hmm. Um, but I am not impressed. Okay. So, <clears throat> as someone has tasted both, as I bought both bottles, it is a very big difference between the zero sugar and the regular one. And not by the fact that it's zero sugar and this one is full of sugar, is that the tastes aren't even the same. Like, you know, when you have a regular one and a zero sugar one, you could tell that they're kind of in the same, they're in the same family. It's just one got less sugar, right? Right. Or any really any zero sugar, even a zero sugar Mountain Dew I've had before, and it tastes like it's in the same neighborhood as the regular or whatever. This mm-hmm. doesn't even taste. It doesn't have that fruity taste. Like it, 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 it tastes nothing like these two are in the same family. It's like this mystery flavor Mountain Dew is a totally different mystery flavor than the mystery flavor that they put in the regular one. Um, it's very watery too. Yeah, it's not um as carbonated as I would like it to be. Right. It's flat. It's flat. Yeah. It almost it's almost as if it's flat. Yes. It it isn't stuff, but it ain't nowhere near as like that tastes like juice with soda. This Mountain Dew Zero tastes like water 
mixed in with soda and it was more water than soda. And maybe that's a good thing that it's not, it, it's sort of watery because it's not going to be as corrosive to your teeth as right. regular soda would be. Mm-hmm. So, well, that was that. Um, I did try one time. Uh, my son got a, uh, I think it was called a Baja. It's a Baja something. It was a, it was actual mango flavor, something gold or something. And it was very good. It was very, very good. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was very good. All right. So that is what these uh, Mountain Dew mystery flavors are. I hope they come out and tell us what they are. But these two are not the same. They're two different flavors. I can tell you that much. Um, well, let's get into the meat of the show. Steph, there's been some stuff coming out. Um, a lot of people may or may not know this guy. He's a black pastor by the name of John Gray. He had his own show on the OWN Network. What was the name of that show, Steph? Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Gray something. I remember it was on OWN Network. But anyways, he had his own reality show on OWN and he was a big, he's out of North Carolina. Steph, let's just go ahead and dive into it. There's been a lot going on with this guy over the last few years and then there was a lot just this year that will make you scratch your head and go, hmm. And I would just like to have a conversation about What's going on with this guy? So dive into his stuff. Tell us about this guy and tell us what's been going on with him. Ooh. First lady. Gray. Mm. Ross. <laughs> Damn. That was this year, right? He was in the he was in he was in the house. So wait, let's take a step back. This young man, uh, John Gray, John Gray Ministries, he's he's out of what? Greenville, South Carolina. How far is it? Well, he is the senior pastor of Relentless Church in Greenville, South Carolina. The show that he had was... Is a, from where you grew up. Okay. Relentless Church. Relentless, yes, sir. Relentless Church. Wow. Um, the name of the show that he had <laughs> on the own network was the Book of John Gray. It was a docu-series. And <clears throat> the he was Book previously of John Gray? Yeah. Docu-series. <laughs> um He's the senior pastor while still serving as a teaching voice at Lakewood Church in Houston, Texas. He was previously named to Oprah's Super Soul 100, a collection of 100 awakened leaders who are using their voices and talent to elevate humanity. What does that mean? A hundred 
one hundred awakened, awakened yeah. leaders. What does that mean? Okay. He was born in Cincinnati, Ohio. <laughs> With their two children, John W. Gray Fourth and Theory Aspen Sky Gray at Port Cool. Oh, awesome. So- <laughs> <laughs> that name is relentlessly insufferable. Yeah. The nickname for that child is Tutu. The nickname for the boy is Four because he's the fourth. Um so Let's go ahead and dive into that real quick. This man is a senior pastor. Now back in now back in my day. <laughs> back in the old days. Not all churches adhered to this, you know, but most churches back in the day, uh, when the pastor did something crazy, especially as many times as this and it was publicly known, um, they were sat down. Sat down mean, you know, for you all that are listening to us or watching us, shall I say, they were not able to preach. They were taken out of the pulpit for however long they had to, whatever it was, counseling, forgiving. They were sat down. And I have not seen any of the sort of this guy being sat down. He's continued to pastor this church after numerous allegations of infidelity with his with uh in his marriage um you know so him being the sole person responsible for it then less than a month or two ago he was on his deathbed um he had a what is it it wasn't a pulmonary embolism was it yeah in his chest they said if he moved, listen, I don't want to speak bad on anybody, but the way that they sent that out, I thought, okay, this is a little bit too Contrived. dramatic. Yeah. There you go. Because he's like, oh, if he moves, he's going to die. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. Y'all already moving him. What are you talking Y'all about? Y'all had to move him to get, to, <laughs> get to, <laughs> to get to the medical facility, right? <laughs> Right. He had to get transported. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Well, so apparently he was on his deathbed and after, you know, he rose up out that bed, he went back to cheating. He rose up out the bed. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I said no, about I'm- the bed, not the tomb. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, for the meantime, when he was non-responsive, he didn't have time to cheat. So that's why I say he went back to cheating. <laughs> um, so let's let's discuss this, right? Um, let me say this, and then I'm going to kick it over to John. Where it comes to men, man and a woman, when they're in a relationship, marriage of you know, uh, it's it's very big. No one is perfect. We all have our faults. We all have our shortcomings. We all make mistakes. Um, you know that that's just a part of life. Learning from our mistakes. Now, when we make the mistake, we cannot dictate how a person or shall I say our spouse or the person that we're in a relationship will respond, right? Whether that's leaving, you know, whatever the case is, because we created the environment that we're in now. We, you know, went through with the transgression of, you know, making a 
very, very <clears throat> costly mistake in your relationship. Having said that, you know, again, I'm not condoning a person falling down even once, right? But let's say that happens and let's say that your spouse forgives you. Okay, cool. Why? I have two questions. Number one, after your spouse has forgiven you, ooh, that's so creepy, this Google thing. You heard that? I'm going to have to unplug these damn things. Let me listen to the conversation. Um, after the one time it happens, right, and your spouse forgives you, you then go back and you continue to do it. Why are people still following this person that's supposed to be a shepherd, shepherd for the Lord? And sitting up underneath someone that is continuing continuing to make a fool of his wife for the public to see. And then two, Miss Aventura, is your status as a first lady worth you going through this humiliation publicly time and time again? It makes no sense to me that this man has continued to make you and his congregation look like fools. And you guys are still sticking by his side. This wasn't a he fell down and he got up once like Donnie McClurkin would say. He is continuing to do it because from my vantage point, he can get away with it and nobody's going to do anything about it. No one's going to turn their back on him. No one's going to say, Hey, you're wrong. None of these things. So he's continuing to do these things because nobody's holding him accountable. Nobody in his, 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 his circle, none of his associate pastors or ministers, his deacons, if he has any, any of the mothers of the church, his congregation, his wife, his family, no one is holding him accountable for the decisions that he continues to make that makes his wife and family and his congregation look like fools. Because at the end of the day, he's going to continue to do what he's doing. He could care less what he's telling you, what he's telling me. And I don't I never put I never look at any man that gets in the pulpit as a perfect man. I was taught there was only one perfect person to walk this earth. However, what you cannot do. Is get your butt up there on Sunday morning. And preach to me about what I'm doing or what I'm not doing right. Telling me what I'm not doing good, what I need to change in my life. And you was just uh, sexing, sex, sexting um, some woman that's probably sitting in the congregation. You're not going to do that. I seen the other day, and I ain't going to call no names, uh, a, 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 a minister that... Just Sunday, uh, a couple of Sundays ago, was preaching their heart out. Then they had the damn, uh, who was here in concert the other day? I can't remember who was in concert here the other day. Whatever it was, they were dancing their ass off at the concert. Like they just weren't preaching their heart out. Now, don't get me wrong. I ain't going to sit here and condemn you. That's your lifestyle. But some things, if you're going to do that and you're sitting there preaching your heart out on a Sunday and, you know, you're trying to tell people to live righteous and all this other stuff. The last thing you need to do is record yourself or have somebody record you dancing to some explicit music. Getting down. And I'm sure drinking was somewhere around. That's why I love that show. Uh, the green leaves because it really showed how folk is. So, John, I know you, you know, like myself, I'm, I, I, I didn't know too much about John Gray. 
I just read, you know, some of the articles and I remember seeing the show in passing when I would turn the channels. But regardless of not knowing this guy, what are your thoughts on time and time again? This guy is creating, I'm sorry, uh, uh, going out there choosing infidelity over the sanctity of marriage and making his family look like fools publicly and making his congregation look like fools publicly. It's very disappointing that you choose to be a walking contradiction up there on the, on the pulpit, essentially stating, uh, do as I say, not as I do. And then it, yeah, from what was outlined by uh, Steph, uh, seems like uh, the higher ups of the church are complicit in this effort to, for whatever reason, keep this guy around and uh, preach the word because maybe in their eyes, he's good for business. Um, at some point your conscience has to talk to you and say, uh, yeah, even though this might be good for business, uh, it's probably only going to be good for the short term, not the long term, mm -hmm. usually. And to not only, you know, dishonor your, 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 uh, your wife, and your devotion to uh, uh, the church and, uh, and and the word and and in the faith, and parade yourself as this um, holier than thou individual. Um, it's it's fascinating, it's absolutely mm -hmm. fascinating, especially when people once again um, he admitted to. Uh, being a deviant, regardless if it was physical or or not, he admitted to it. Mm -hmm. And then the congregation decides not to hand down any type of judgment, i.e. Uh, taking their uh, uh, faith to some other uh, place of worship. They, you know, they, they stayed there for whatever reason. I don't know. Um, I couldn't I, I couldn't do it. I, I couldn't sit up there uh, Sunday or Bible study on Wednesday, or whatever you happen to have Bible study and know that the person I'm supposed to get the word from, or I chose to get the word from is an absolute fraud. I can't take mm -hmm. frauds. For, I can't take fraud seriously in mm -hmm. any capacity. I will not take them seriously. Once you lose credibility with me, I'm done with you for, for good, especially when it comes to the faith and for everybody in that church house from the communication, as far as his illness and how contrived and, and completely ridiculous, uh, that press release was. <laughs> it's absolutely fascinating. It's crazy. <laughs> He did. I mean, that's how I say everything, but it's. Did I say something wrong? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Not sorry. Not sorry. But yeah, <sighs> um, I can't take frauds uh, seriously. Because fraud, scammers, whatever the case may be, they're bad for business, uh, for the soul. Um, they're bad for the for business in the long term. And, um, you know, to go out there and basically uh, embarrass your wife uh, week after week. Um, and then for her to stick around. Once again, I don't know exactly what their circumstances are. Uh, I'm, I'm a proponent of working it out and sticking together. Uh, but if you have a propensity to go out there and embarrass your wife in front of the congregation, not just the congregation, but the world at large, um, 
I don't know if that's something that's sustainable. I don't know if that's a marriage that's that's sustainable. But once again, I'm I'm all for therapy and, and couples therapy and things of that nature and communicating and talking it out. But at some point, at some point you got to draw the line somewhere. And I don't know if that line's gotten pushed further and further down the street. I have no idea for her. I have no idea, but I know that couldn't be my wife. <laughs> Push down the street. It's pushing to another state at this stratosphere, point. different galaxy. Um, yeah. Steph, I know you've oh, been yes. foaming at the mouth to jump on Mr. Gray. Come on. <laughs> right, John. That's you want some is. you want some baby powder? Come on with it now. I know the Lord, he heard my cry. Mm. Hockey. Mm. 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 Okay. Talk to me, Steph. Mm. Okay. Woo. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm. Mm. 
Mm. Mm. She's a girl. That dude, I could pop to her. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. 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 Oh yeah, I saw that. Look at John's face. Look at John's face still. Explain to John what you were saying about the Lamborghini. Yeah, every time that every time he cheats on her, he gives her some type of special gift. So one time was a Lamborghini. Another time was like a Mercedes truck, if I'm not mistaken. Another time was um, he showed off buying her. It was something. It was something else he had showed off. But. Yeah. Woo. Hmm. Damn. All right. Um. Man. Okay. Well, you know what, Steph, I'm with you when you're right. I, I, I hope. <laughs> I hope it is worth the trip, and you know, it, it's just astonishing how. He's just sitting there and nothing. And like you said, every time you turn around, there's something going on and something's being said about somebody in the industry of gospel. And most times, as you pointed out, it is condemning the women that are Christians or, you know, in the gospel arena. Never do you hear anything bad when something happens with the men. I mean, you hear it, but you don't see anyone getting on their platform to condemn it. You see people coming out of the Woodworth condemning the Clark sisters about allowing Beyonce to sample her when most of the gospel music is sampled from secular music. Uh, Right, right. So, I mean, but then it's silence when you see the John Grays or you've seen the, you know, he's gone now, but the Eddie Longs, um, you know, all these people that have done things in plain sight for everyone and there's silence, but let, you know, a woman sample some song, let her wear a, a, a skirt right above the knee, um, yeah, you know, but but then again, too, you, and, 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 and I'm, I'm going to say this. Women do it to other women, too. Look at what Juanita Bynum did. She went out there and talked about, you know, secular music, and then they had to bring back that receipt of her dancing to Beyonce or, or somebody for her birthday. Just, so, you know, like, wait a minute. What did you just say? Um, Kim Burrell is the worst, you know, but there's a lot of there's a lot of going stuff going on with her. You know, she has to wake up and look in the mirror every day. So that's why her day starts off bad. But, you know, um, I, I hope that, you know, somebody in his camp, a friend, you know, let me tell you something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Hold me accountable, please. I, I, I want you to hold me accountable. If I'm wrong about something, 
If there's something that I, you know, that I may have said or did out of order, I want you to hold me accountable. I want you to let me know, hey, you are out of order. Hey, this was wrong. I'm okay with that because in my anger or being in my own sin or, you know, being in my own flesh, I may not see it. So hold me accountable and let me know. Let me know that, hey, this is this doesn't look good. Let me know that, hey, man, you need to work on this. Uh, You know, this is what I'm seeing. I'm fine with that. Don't yes me. Don't say you good. Don't especially when I could look back and reflect and say, damn, that wasn't good. You know what I'm saying? So nobody is doing that for old boy. And if you haven't noticed, I don't call him pastor. Because what he's doing does not reflect uh, a man that has been called by God um, to help lead the people to seek Christ. So Mr. Gray is an embarrassment and all of the brothers in Christ that are leaders that we see all the time on these big platforms, they need to get a hold of him. They need to counsel him and they need to hold him accountable. And if they're not doing that, you are just as guilty as he is. Because he should not be in anybody's pulpit preaching nothing from the Bible. Nothing. I'm sorry. There is it just has happened too many times. And this is ridiculous. He just got off supposedly as just said <laughs> that the contrived, contrived uh, uh, message about him being on his deathbed. Hey, maybe the man was. I don't know. But, you know, now all of a sudden you were cheating. You know, come on, man. So really, really a sad thing. And um, imagine what people feel, what people fail to look at too is your actions it doesn't just affect you it also affects the children that are involved because now as these kids get older they have to deal with you know their classmates knowing who the father is and pointing to that article damn look how many times your dad uncheated on your mom you know what I'm saying? Let alone naming them children, you know, in a way that they get made fun of. Never mind that. You put them in bad situations. Think about that. Listen. And that's what I said earlier. That's why I said we're all human, right? It, it happens. Um, you know, we, 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 we fall weak. But I can tell you that even with you falling weak, why can you not sit down with your spouse and have a conversation before, you know, it gets to that point? Because at the end of the day, no matter how your spouse is making you feel, the sex that you have with somebody else is just something in a moment you're going to go back to feeling the same way after the sex is done. That says ain't going to change nothing. You know what I'm saying? It's a, you damn right. It's a choice. You don't get all the way butt ass naked without, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) When somebody says, oh, it just happened. No, the hell it didn't. You got to go through too many articles of clothing or whatever. Yeah. You're not going to accidentally fall. Listen, (laughs) let me shut up. Um, Mhm. 
Right. Right. Well, you got to put your big boy pants on. Or your big boy, uh, big girl panties on and have those hard conversations. Because one thing you cannot do is people are... You cannot dictate how a person will respond, right? So, for instance, John Gray went out and did these things. What if she had got up that morning and said, you know what, I'm tired of this, and just shot him shot him to hell? Then she goes to prison. They, the parents don't have any parents because one's dead, one's in prison, instead of what could have been a communication, what could have been a sit-down conversation where, listen, I'm not happy. I don't know what's going to happen here. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm not happy. We probably need to kind of, you know, we can go do the counseling thing. And if that doesn't work out, then we need to go our separate ways because I don't want to be put in a situation where I've moved on from this marriage. And now I'm doing things that I should not be doing while I'm married. Um, And so you have to, you know, look at those things. You have to go, well, I don't want to do this anymore, right? I I, I just don't. But you got to have that conversation. You can't take it upon yourself to do something stupid. And then that person reacts and two wrongs don't make a right. Whether it's the other person going out to cheat to pay you back, that person gets violent, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't make it right. So be mature about it and sit down and have that conversation. Look, this ain't working out. It just is not working out. Let's go do some counseling or something because my head is somewhere else and it ain't in this marriage. And you cannot be afraid to have that conversation because like I'm telling you it, all it takes is one bad day. It, it, it was like a, um, I'm referencing a comic, a book um, with Batman and a Joker. And in that, in that comic Joker said, all it takes is one bad day and people will, you know, turn. You know, the, the greatest person that has never showed any signs of being evil or, you know, have been the best person living life and you looked up to him. All it takes is one bad day. That's it. And Aventura could get up one morning and say, you know what? I don't give a damn about none of this stuff anymore. I'm sick of you. I'm sick of you embarrassing me. I don't have the courage to leave, but I do have the courage to blow your brains out. Not saying I want that to happen, but a lot of times that's what we see. And I'm and I'm never sitting here saying, oh, it's the you know, I can I can understand why they did it. You should never kill anyone. But when you see things that have happened and you're like, oh, that's why they did that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes you're like, why could they do that? How could they do that? But then you see other scenarios coming to play and you say, oh, that's why they did it. It ain't right. They shouldn't have done it. But I see that now I know why they did that. You know what I'm saying? So just be mature. We all we are all adults and you got two kids. You should not be putting your kids through that, because the one thing about it is kids can pick up on stuff. More than you think they can. And if they can sense it without it being public, but if they can sense that stuff, shoot, man, it's side gone. That's my granddad would say, sad, gone. You, you, you just stuck there. But this is embarrassing. This is totally embarrassing. And his big ass need to get himself in, 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 in check. Sitting there trying to preach to somebody. Man, I wish you would. I'd be done told that nigga, get out my face. Um, see, I didn't even want to call him a nigga, but I did. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, that's enough of Mr. Gray. We want to go ahead and, you know, not going to make this a very long thing. Next week, we will not be here. 
um, for episode seven. So we'll be taking a week break. I'll be out of the country. Well, you know what? I take that back. John and uh, Steph can do episode seven without me. That'd be fun to see. I think you guys should do it. Uh, <laughs> that'd be fun to see you two do the episode. I'll be I'll be out of the uh, I'll be out of the country, so to speak. So you know, we probably we may have an episode seven next week if John and uh, Steph want to do that. I am all on board for that. I would love to come back and watch a, a YouTube episode. So stay tuned. Um, wh- wow. So. Wow, that's not fair, Steph. I don't make fun of you. Real quick, I, I do want to say this. Um, it was announced today by Center World Group, which is the world's second largest movie theater chain and owner of Regal Cinema, that it has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. The British company, which owns more than 500 movie theaters across the United States, said that it commenced Chapter 11 proceedings in the United States Bankruptcy Court for the Southern District of Texas to shed company debt. It also expects the action will strengthen its balance sheet and provide the financial strength and flexibility to accelerate and capitalize on center world strategy in the cinema industry. The company added that it has access to nearly two billion dollars in financing from existing lenders to keep operating. So wait a minute, John, help me out here, brother. If you have access to nearly two thousand two billion dollars in financing from existing lenders, why are you filing Chapter 11? Talk to me. Two billion. Talk to me big time. How does that happen? I'm trying to wrap my head around that one. How are you able to secure <laughs> two billion in financing, i.e., debt, more debt, mm-hmm. uh, in order to keep operations going? I have, I, I have, I'm puzzled. Wow, you're wow, this is a first. Yeah, usually, usually you file, you know, chapter eleven. Chapter 7, 11, they all mean something different. And I don't know if they're trying to restructure the debt so that they can pay it back. Um, You stated in the article that they're trying to shed debt. So um, leave creditors on the hook for money that has already been somewhat guaranteed or borrowed uh, with the uh, agreement that it would be paid back at a later date. So obviously those debts have matured and they don't have the funds. So are they going to rob Peter to pay Paul? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around that and I'm trying to, and I don't understand why I try to understand this stuff when it comes to uh, uh, the legal system here in the United States and and bankruptcy proceedings, um, Mm -hmm. how a lot of this stuff is, is legal, how you can legally uh, say, well, I'm going to pay you back, but then fleece the other company that you promised to pay back and they're not going to be able to recruit anything. The only thing they can do is go through the claims process uh, within the bankruptcy court in order to recoup uh, whatever the stated amount was that was guaranteed to be paid back. And nine times out of 10, they're never going to see that money again, if that's the case. But how, what bank, what bank, I don't know if they did this before they filed bankruptcy, probably, to secure two billion, two billion in in, in, in financing. Mm-hmm. But what bank? If I'm the bank and I know that you and I look at your your uh, your balance sheet, mm-hmm. your uh, financial statements, and I know that you are fiscally on the on the ropes, I'm not loaning you any money, especially yeah. post pandemic. And after everything is opened up and you still can't draw anybody to your theaters with the young, with, with the insane amount that they charge tickets for. And then don't even get me started on concessions. (laughs) Well, that's what I'm trying to understand. Like how uh, I haven't heard this with any other uh, movie group, 
why are they the ones that are struggling? The second largest movie group. Who's the largest? AMC, right? AMC's the largest, right? I believe so. Which is weird to me with AMC being the largest because I don't see many of those here, at least in Orlando, in the Central Florida area. Yeah. So let me finish. The company warned late last month that a voluntary Chapter 11 filing was one of the options it was reviewing to reduce its debt. We have we have an incredible team across Center World laser focused on involving our business to thrive during the comeback of the cinema industry. Mookie Grindinger, Center World CEO, said in a statement on Wednesday, the pandemic was an incredibly difficult time for our business with the enforced closure of cinemas and huge disruption to film schedules that has led us to this point. Uh, Grenader added that the bankruptcy filing is part of our ongoing efforts to strengthen our financial position and is in pursuit of a deleveraging that will create a more resilient capital structure and effective business. Okay, so basically, Chapter 11 is a reorganization of the debtor's business affairs, i.e. debts and assets and, Mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, I guess the main difference is that the entity filing for bankruptcy, they remain in control of the operations mm-hmm. and required and, and not required to liquidate assets. So I guess in that sense, they can go ahead and, uh, acquire financing from another financial institution if they're foolish enough to do so. Mm-hmm. So, um, they probably have some plan in place to ultimately at some point uh, pay their creditors back. Um, and then on top of that, I think the creditors have to be uh, on, on uh, I guess in, in, in lockstep with them in regards to this whole bankruptcy uh, in these bankruptcy proceedings and such. So, but I don't, it, it, if I'm a bank, a, a, a large bank or investment company, uh, where I am uh, tasked with getting ROI return on investment, I'm probably not making that investment. It's too risky for me. Well, the company lost $2.7 billion in 2020 and another, and another $566 million in 2021. Yeah. So they lost $3 billion in two two years? Yes. Credit CNN for that uh, that article I just read. Did it state what, what the $2 billion in financing is going to be allocated towards? Probably not. Mm, but- no, they didn't. Mm-mm. They did not. That's a whole lot of money. And they need to upgrade them regal movie theaters. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do. That the restrooms are uh, uh, a 50 50 proposition for anyone. <laughs> I haven't been to a regal cinema in years. However, I believe I dropped Isaac off at one, maybe, was he a freshman in high school? Yeah. So it's about right before the pan, right as the pandemic, no, he was, it was last year actually. And I asked him, you know, did it still look the same from when you was a little kid and we used to take you up there? He said, yes. I said, oh, okay. Man, all they did was reupholster the seats in there. That's all they did. Uh Let me tell you something. At Cinemark, they had them soft, nice leather recliners. And I, I just, I for me, I never thought when, when movies started, well, not all of them do it, but when they started doing, I went to a movie theater that did the assigned seating thing where you pick where you seat, where you pick where you sit. At first, I was like, oh, this sucks. I got to pick where I'm going to sit at. But now it's like, yeah, my seat is there. 
I ain't got to rush. And now I could recline, baby, and put my feet up and, and be comfortable. Shoot, man, please. Really? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, they are cheap. Um, that's why I know that used to be, you know, a lot of times in the group, they'll say something because I make a post like before the pandemic when uh, Iris and I would go on Tuesdays, but $5 movies on Tuesdays was the deal. It still is. So we will go to a movie on a Tuesday in a minute for $5. You know what I'm saying? So, um, oh, not to, uh, I forgot to ask you, John, how did the, the three dollar Saturday go for you. I was saying it was it, crazy chaos everywhere. It was great. Proper preparations prevents poor performance. That's why I like online <laughs> purchasing. <laughs> there were a lot of people who got turned away from. Uh, we we saw the Minions, and I was actually pleasantly surprised. It was a great movie. Yeah, it looked um, like it was. We got in there. Um, it was packed. It was packed from the brim because, of course, it's three bucks. So I'm mm-hmm. like, shit, I can buy like three large uh, bottled waters and a jumbo <laughs> a bucket of popcorn for 12 bucks. Oh, I'm so you sure st- I- you're nice because uh, them bottled water still go in my pocket once I stop by 7-Eleven. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> hey. You know, I got these big ass pockets on these shouts. They going in there. They going in Iris Purse one. Now, I, and I had I my made... cargo shorts on too, and I didn't even think to put like four or five, six bottles in them damn things. <laughs> yes, yes. So I'm sorry, I got 